Hi, this is Nat Mose. I'm here with uh, Sam Crollo. We're watching round four, game three of the Tokyo MTG uh, Vintage Open 2, which was held uh, July 5th, 2014. Um, <clears throat> on the left hand of your screen, you'll see a uh, Gitaxi and Long deck, and on the right hand of your screen, you'll see a Show and Oath deck, which uses both Show and Tell and Oath of Druids. Um, yep. The uh, Show and Oath deck won game one. And uh, based on a uh, gristle brand that had gotten to play, even against its opponents, using yeah, using his oath against him to right. get a blightsteel right. colossus into play. Right. So we had the gristle brand versus oath, but or sorry, gristle brand versus blightsteel colossus, but blightsteel colossus got bounced, and, and uh, gristle brand won much. the day. Yep. And then game two, um, the long player on the left was able to use the oath, the spirit token he got from the Forbidden Orchard from the Oath player yeah, and beat him down for a few turns and then put in a small tendrils to get there. Yeah, absolutely. So that worked out well. All right, we have an impulse from the Oath player now. Yep. The impulse is a interesting uh, sort of cantrip that uh, wasn't, isn't really used all that often in vintage, but I think it's actually pretty good. I, I like Impulse a lot. Yeah, you dig you dig four deep with Impulse. You, you look at the top four cards of your library, and then one of them you put into your hand, and then the the other three you put on the bottom, mm -hmm. bottom of your library. And the uh, the interesting thing about Impulse is that it was eroded almost immediately <laughs> um, because they realized, Wizards realized, once you put the cards on the bottom, there's really no reason for you to shuffle um, so the original wording of the card had you shuffle, but they took that out. So you actually just look at the top four, put one into your hand, put three on the bottom, and then shuffle. Uh, sorry, don't just shuffle. Put, <laughs> yeah, just, just put three on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, the Kataxian long deck, uh, he's looking for a... You, you vampiric tutored for Grafdigger's Cage yeah, there. He's, he's vampiric tutoring for Grafdigger's Cage, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, he's looking to shut down Oath again, but we, we know that the Oath player has a show-and-tell in hand. Right. So that would completely get around Grafdinger's cage. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, sort of a controlling play for a very aggressive combo deck. Yeah, um, exactly. He's, normally, it's more of a defensive strategy. Right. Normally you'd be going for another bomb, another big, big splashy spell that would, you know, potentially win the game instead of a, uh, instead of a control spell yeah, like Grafdinger's cage. Yeah, slow your cage. opponent down kind of thing. Right. Plus, the, uh, the Grafdinger's cage also has the potential to shut off your own... Uh, Yagmas will mm -hmm. shut With, up your own. Uh, yeah, Yagmas will being one of the one of your large storm generators, really. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean Yagmas will is going to be uh, the uh, one of the main win conditions for any storm combo deck. Yep, definitely. Uh, whether you get to use that or not, it definitely makes it easier to count to ten. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with Black Lotus. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, Black Lotus, Demonic Tutor, Yawgmoth's Will, in your opening hand is... Yep. It, you're in happy town at that point. <laughs> Alright, looks like more mana for the Oath deck here. I know. Is he going to fetch here? Yep. Flood Strand, it looks like. What do we have? A Skelling Tarn, Mox Pearl, Tropical Island, and Underground Sea now? Yeah, it looks like. And he's got a Tropical Island just so got. he can cast all of them if you'd like. But we we know that Grafdigger's cage is on the op opposing side in his hand. Yeah, it's always sort of interesting watching the uh, the different back and forth. I mean, what the yep. what the players get that is in secret from their opponents. Yeah. So here we we do have the oath, and his opponent can say, "Oh yeah, that resolves." And yeah. Know that he has Grafdigger's cage in hand. Yeah. Another interesting thing about it is you'll let it resolve, play his cage. And then now the Oath deck, I'm, I'm assuming he has Abrupt Decays, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it probably does. I mean, which, we're looking at a Bug, bug Oath deck. Which yeah, have, which I, is a know, great answer for right. Grafdigger's Cage. Yeah, absolutely. And usually, I don't know, I, I feel like I've done this in the past, where you think Oath is not a problem, and all of a sudden, Abrupt Decay comes out, and you're like, oh, oh crap, I'm in a bad place here. <laughs> Turns out <laughs> I'm Oath in trouble. was a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, I'm uh, about to lose this game. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, Abrupt Decay is very good both against Oath and in the Oath deck. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. It's a uh, great 
answer yeah. for oath. Abrupt decay both uh, blows up the oath and uh, it can blow off the graph digger's cage on the opponent's side. So it's uh, it can go either way. Mm hmm. Definitely. All right, we so have a, a ponder here from the long deck. Yeah, so I feel like the, the long deck has both played uh, Brainstorm and Ponder. I wonder if he's trying to draw out a, any mental missteps his opponent might have. Um, that's, yeah, that's a good point. It's kind of kind of an interesting question. Um, Ooh, I saw a force. I don't remember the other two cards. Yeah. Was that a Thoughtseize? Yeah, it might have been. I'm not sure. Um, but the, uh, you know, both of those one drops would potentially draw out a mental misstep. But he's going to go with the uh, oh. thoughts he's here. Must be a thoughts. Yep, Force Will and Demonic Tutor. Yeah. Demonic Tutor being on top. That's pretty good. Is that a Fluster Storm? Or a misstep? I didn't I couldn't see, tell if honestly. he tapped mana. It was a counter. <laughs> yeah, so it definitely counter the uh, thoughts he's there. Oh, and then we have a Soul Ring. See, he's setting up his next turn because he's got Demonic Tutor on top. So he should be ready to go next. Yeah, I feel like we've uh, we're, we've been looking at uh, a lot of different one drops that have come out of the uh, combo player's hand, and finally leading up to that uh, graph digger's cage that shut off the oath. So oath can uh, had the opportunity to oath there, but he basically what happens if you oath in the face of graph digger's cage is you would um, reveal cards from your library into the graveyard and when you get to a creature that instead of going into play because both uh, would go on top of your library yep. because of graph digger's cage and so, then you would draw that for the turn and then that would draw for be your draw for the turn so it, if the oath player had chosen to oath there Do, does he have a forbidden orchard could he have made a creature oh i don't know maybe he didn't actually i think he's short right now so he, maybe he can't even oath Oh, another impulse. Yeah, he's going to play another impulse here. <clears throat> so he might still be looking for the uh, the full Oath combo there between Oath yeah. and uh, Forbidden Orchard. Exactly. He's got his card picked out. I think that was a Forbidden Orchard. Yeah, I think it was that hard was to tell, but I think it was. Too. Which is a great find. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you, I mean... As long as he can get rid of the Graph Digger's Cage. You definitely have four uh, well, Forbidden Orchards in your deck, so he, yeah. he, he definitely had the opportunity to find one there. Yeah, the interesting thing about Oath with Grafter's Cage, it's like like we kind of just said, it's it's a tutor for your creature. Right. With him having Show and Tell in hand, that's that's actually pretty powerful. Oh, absolutely. Oh, is he playing Show and Tell right now? Oh boy, maybe he's already has maybe he already has a creature. I know he is yes. playing a lot of creatures in yeah, his in his Oath deck. That is Show and Tell. There we have Grizzlebrand. Yeah. Oh, and we have Grizzlebrand versus Black Lotus. Black Lotus from the Long deck. Oh, Black Lotus is a. I think I would have chosen not to play anything. Well. I'm not sure actually, because Gristlebrand might give him a counter. And oh, at that I, point you want. Black if your Lotus opponent plays Show and Tell, I would definitely play Black Lotus. Yeah, that's a good could. point. Because you, I mean, any opportunity you can to get something into play without the possibility of it being countered or yeah. Um, I mean, especially something high impact like Black Lotus. Like I, I would definitely go go for that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think that was the Oath of Druids there. In this graveyard. Okay, so we, we drew seven and... Did we draw seven and discard? I think. No, okay, he's fine. giving him a token for... Oh, he's giving him a token with Orchard so he can't activate Oath. All right. Yeah, so he drew seven and he discarded the end of his turn and now he's giving him a token. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the interesting parts about Oath is it's it's both ways. Like, you can abuse it yourself, but if, if you end up having more creatures, your opponent can use it. Right, there's actually a, a full cycle of uh, Oath uh, enchantments from Exodus. Yeah. That uh, all of them work for both players, and mm -hmm. it just depends on which one has the uh, greater amount of resources than the other. I mean, I, yeah. I think the, the um, blue one I know works for cards in hand, and the red one works for life total and things like that, so... Oath of Ghouls is the black one, isn't it? Yeah, Oath of Ghouls is the black one, which works on the number of cards in the graveyard. Okay, that's what it is. Um, and I, I, you know, all of them have have great potential to be broken. Like, if you can, if you could take advantage of them more than your opponent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But Oath of Druids being the one, <laughs> right. it seems the most overpowered o Oath in, in Druids, our situation. Oath of Druids is definitely the one where you can take more advantage because you can build your deck around it, and then you can basically put giant creatures into play. I mean, yeah, Forbidden Orchard made it really easy to abuse abuse Oath. Right. Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. One that once those two cre- or once those two cards were printed together, once the mm-hmm. uh, Forbidden Orchard both interaction was uh, identified, it was it was very much a. Uh, Is that a demonic tutor? And it looks like the judge foil. An important thing to go for. I think it was time walk. Each yeah, time. I, I believe he time uh, demonic tutor for time walk. Uh, time this walk is, is really good. <laughs> yeah, time, time walk is very strong with oath. You can give your opponent uh, extra creatures with forbidden orchard. Yep, and then, and then you can essentially oath again if and you then, like. Yeah, absolutely, and oath again. Um, and it's you know if you can get that uh, situation set up, you know whether by demonic tutor or whether by uh, yagmas will, whether by rune scarred demon, which you yep. oath into play, um, you can. You can really take control of the game. Mm-hmm. Time walk so turn. We're, we're going to time walk turn, and we're untapping. Yeah, honestly, not looking too good for the long player on the left. Yeah, I think this is. Oh. Oh, we have we, chain he, of paper. He does have chain of paper. Do we have a mental misstep? Yes, we do. I think that's what he played. Yeah. <laughs> So we're gonna not chain a vapor. It's, you know. It was a good attempt. It was a yeah, good attempt. Absolutely. I thought we were gonna have something spiced up here. Yeah, we're still gonna take the seven damage, and we're uh, the uh, oath player is still gonna gain seven life, and uh, of course, seven life with Grizzlebrand in play still means yeah. seven cards potential. So uh, think about this, Nat. Do you think Grizzlebrand would still be played as much if it didn't have lifelink? I feel oh. like it would still be abused. Yeah, that's a good question. I, you know, I think it would still be abused. I mean, it's like Yogmoth's Bargain is yeah, still Yog, an Yogmoth's incredibly Starbuck. powerful yeah. card. Absolutely, Yogmoth's Bargain is still played, and I, I think that. Uh, and that that makes you skip your draw step even. Yeah, being able to draw cards, you know, sort of willy nilly, is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the the nice thing about Grizzlebrand is it still gives you that option of you know losing some life, gaining some life, drawing more cards. Definitely. Um, yeah, it looks like the Oath player is kind of closing this game up now. Yeah. We have a Demonic Tutor on the left and then Force of Will on the right. Yep. Oh, looks like that's going to be it. Yep, he's showing his hand. 